we look at an equation now that can't actually be factorised. And we wouldn't normally know whether or not something can be factorised or not. We'd have to check it ourselves. So, we need to solve this. We can see straight away that it can't be factorised. I don't know how on earth we can get something times together to make minus one, especially when we've we a difference of seven. The only things that can times together to make minus one are minus one and one. So we obviously cannot get a difference of seven. This is not going to factorise. So we have to use this equation called the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation looks like this. X equals minus B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Don't remember about remember, don't worry about remembering this. A lot of you may re remember this anyway, but don't worry about remembering it is given to you in the front of your exam book. So, where are all these numbers coming from? There's your a. There's your B. There's your C. So, let's work through this. So, equals minus B. So, B is 7. So, minus 7. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. 7 squared. Minus 4. Times by A, which is 3. Times by C which is minus 1, all divided by 2 times a, which is 3. OK, let's do this. So it equals minus 7, plus or minus. Let's work this whole thing out. So 4 times 3 is 12, times minus 1 is minus 12. So we've got square root 49 plus this whole adds up to minus 12, so this is going to become a minus and a minus, making it a plus. Okay, so 49 plus 12 is 52, 51, yeah, 61, that's where the brain's going, so 49 plus 12 is 61, so let's just put that straight in there. Okay, and all divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. So, we're going to get two answers, okay? Let's do the square root of 61 now. I don't know about you, but I can't do that off the top of my head. It is 7.81. So, we've got that it equals minus 7 plus 7.81 divided by 6. And it's also going to equal minus 7 minus 7.81 divided by 6. So we get two values for x. Okay, so let's do the first one. Minus 7 plus 7.81 is 0.81 divided by 6. It's going to give us 0 0.135. That's our first solution. And we have minus 7 minus 7.81 equals divided by 6 is 2 minus 2.47. So minus 2.47. So our solutions here are x could equal 0.1354. Or x could equal minus 2.47. So there are uh, two solutions. It's just a case of putting it in the equation. So let's have another go. Let's do it again. Let's do it all again. So this time we're going to have x squared plus. 10x equals 4. Now, it's not how we remember having it, is it? We remember having it equals 0. So we need to turn this into 
equals zero. We need to get rid of that four. So all we need to do, minus four from each side. That will get us our zero. That will give us our x squared plus 10x minus four. And that equals zero. So now I should plug those numbers into the equation. So the equation, let's remember, we'll put it up here this time, is x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the quadratic equation. So let's put these figures in. Okay, what's b? b is 10, so minus 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared, take away 4, times a is 1, times c is minus 4, and then divided by 2, times a is 1. Okay, so let's do this bit. So we get, it equals minus 10, plus or minus square root of 100, plus, 16. 4 times minus 4 is minus, minus 16. Minus minus make a plus. All of that divided by 2. Divided by 2. I don't know why I'm writing times 1 in. 2 divided by 2. So, this equals minus 10 plus or minus square root 116 over 2. Okay? So it equals minus 10 plus, so let's do the plus first, square root of 116 is 10.77, 4 over 2. That's going to give us 0.77 over 2, and 0.77 divided by 2. So we our first x value of 0.385. Okay, our next one we're going to have equals minus 10 plus minus 10.77 all divided by 2, which is going to be 20 minus 20.77 divided by 2. So that's going to give us our x value. Our last x value is 10.385. Don't forget the minus, minus 10.385. So there's our two x values. That is our solution. Always check if you can factorise first, because factorising is easier and is quicker. This is the last result. Generally, if the question asks you, give the answer to a certain number of decimal places, you can't factorise. But always, always check if you can factorise. Okay, that's basically the most advanced algebra we're going to do. We'll still see algebra as we go through, that's pretty much an end to algebra. All that's left for me to do with some graphs is just show you some other forms of graphs and how we deal with those. So, practice these questions, practice solving quadratic equations, deciding whether you can factorise or you can't factorise, and then come back and we'll just finish up all the graph stuff.